Somebody call for an exterminator. Nuclear bombs. Somebody call for a nuclear bombs. Somebody call for a nuclear bombs. Somebody call for a nuclear bombs. Detected. Ah! Nuclear bombs. Somebody call for The sword of the original car is a single object. It's pretty easy to reset. The flail is 28. So finally I got off my ass, abstracted the weapon death and reset. So the flail truck's back. Somebody call for an exterminator. Nuclear bombs detected. Ah! The fix for that led to multi-weapon death independence too. The El Camino and the A86 have dual weapons, but they weren't separating on death before, and now they do. Now that all these vehicles are up to snuff, I'm returning the main menu to the build. Patrons will now be able to play with all the cards in the new build. Additionally, I've reinstated free play. Rad fucking band Wanderer contributed track after the first devlog from their upcoming album. Picked up a new commission making a game that just started work. And I need a new apartment, so I've just been having fun talking to landlords, and that's why it's taken a bit to get this video out. Get on with it! Let's start with a quick overview of how a tune shader works. So, the basis of this shader I'm using is the Blinfong lighting model which is conveniently explained everywhere. The diffuse part, which is calculated before, specular reflections is what we're gonna focus on. The amount of lighting that is put on an object is determined by taking the dot product between the light direction and the normal of the surface. Dot products give a number between negative one and one. Zero for perfectly perpendicular vectors, one for a parallel in the same direction, and negative one if they're in opposite direction. If the normal is in opposite direction of any amount, we don't really care since that means it's facing away from the light. We only care about the numbers between zero and one. Because we're calculating this dot product, changing the difference of the normal and the light direction vectors reduces the amount of brightness that the surface will receive. Zero is black, one is white. Anime, for instance, uses about two to three different lighting levels, in contrast to regular diffuse, which smoothly tracks along all the shades of gray. If you take this value of diffuse and compare it to this value on the regular diffuse, there'll be a slight change, but if we're sampling this gradient, it's the same color is produced. Similarly, here and here, we actually get a very large difference in color. That's what makes that solid edge that you see in a lot of cartoon shading. Now that we have our shaded gradient gradiently shaded, now that we have this simplistic shading system, we need to decide when and where to crosshatch. How the fuck are we gonna draw shit on this model? Somebody call for a- Good day, take it slow. Take it slow. Take it slow. I first went down the Take rabbit hole of a uh, texture method. Take it slow. I drew these Take crude gradients of cross hatching in GIMP that I put into a texture array. Depending on its diffuse lighting, decided how much from which part of the array that it took. Damn. Yeah, this is a complicated. <laughs> Of course, my name. In the cage, set the course. Your mommy? It got some okay result. But ultimately, I had some issues with this approach. 
was also fucking something up pretty bad that I didn't fix until later. Set the course. Set the course. Set the course. Set the course. We need to draw lines on the mesh at runtime. In the Unity Shader Graph samples from the Package Manager, they have several different patterns for us to look at. I utilize the stripe sample, uh, and without fully understanding it, it got to work. The UV is how the model communicates what vertices on the model correspond to a space on a 2D texture. It's Kind of like uh, unfolding a cardboard box. Other than the UV, there's screen position. This is what position the given fragment is on the XY coordinate of the screen. UV is where we want to go. Screen position effects stay with the camera. It, cross hatching would look like you're just looking through a screen door. So in reality, the shader is drawing these stripes that we mentioned before with another set rotated opposite all the time. The, the thickness of the lines is what determines if they're visible. Using an exponential curve, we can control the fall off of this cross hatching. Then we add in the darkest part of our tune shading gradient. This is to make it match up with what a shadow would look like. Then we just multiply the diffuse lighting by the pattern that's created. For some extra jazz, give the cross hatching a more sketchy vibe. I added a gradient noise to the thickness. Also, the thickness drives a feedback loop that affects the frequency of the stripes. It becomes more dense as the shadow gets darker. Then I tweak these parameters for a better part of two weeks, playing with what order things are executed in, just moving sliders around, and bam, there you go. Shader feature that 12 people will appreciate. Thanks for staying to the end. Uh, means a lot to me. Be sure to like and subscribe. It'll help my channel, help the game. I, I'm still pretty, still pretty new at this. So any feedback, please leave a comment. I read every comment uh, and respond to it at least a like or something. I give a huge shout out to patrons and uh, folks who ordered a T-shirt. Wanderer. Uh, oh yeah, and on the T-shirts, sent in the order. They. Uh, should be shipped out sometime next week. If you didn't catch on to that one, then don't worry, I'll probably do another one in the future. Sorry this took so long to get out, but life's been pretty hectic. Uh, pretty sure I, since I'm moving next month, uh, I'm, I'm just going to shoot for getting a video out late April, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Cheers. <laughs>